Servants Heart. Servants Heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take. Servants Heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life. We're going to speak on business. You're gonna shine bright. We are going to witness business with our servants' hearts. Servants heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray. Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks. One. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. I am so thrilled to have you join us today. This podcast is dedicated to exploring the idea of doing business and living life with a purpose. That pers- purpose is having a servant's heart. Approaching that will make a difference in your world. And imagine making a difference. We all want to do that, but we're going to show you how today with the podcast, how different ways you can do it. We also want to motivate you, inspire you, and educate you to make an impact in your world. We all can do it. We're not talking about a world impact, because of course we don't have control over that, but if you change your own little world, good things will happen. My guest today is going to blow you away. I spent five minutes with him. I'm already super excited to have him on. Get your pad and paper ready, your electronic device, and you're going to want to take some notes. But while you're listening to him today, I want you to think about how you're going to serve yourself and serve others today. And what impact you create today. And again, that word today is the key. We wait, we wait, but let's make an impact today. But once you get done watching or listening to the show, go impact somebody, go serve somebody. If you have any questions about that, reach out to me. And then today's episode is proudly sponsored by our incredible partner, Pantheon Alliance. Imagine being part of an exclusive community of high income, successful business owners and entrepreneurs from very diverse industries, together building a community of thought leaders to make an impact and change the world for more information reach out to me and i'll get you all the information on that community with that being said impact and service is what this is all about and my guest is doing that in the commercial real estate side but in this construction side we're just talking about how our fathers were both in construction and i think it's an industry could really hear about this doing business with a servant's heart because it's so competitive and all that we won't get into that right now but i want to welcome to our show jason welcome Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Why is construction needed, uh, needs more doing service with, doing business with service art? So growing up, right, it's, um, I I see my dad did all sides of it, right? And you always want to do the the, the right thing first, right? And it's it's a push pull, right? Because you have to make money, right? So you have to be your for-profit business. And the same part here, you want to do the best job possible, right? And so having both of those many times, As a construction business or a construction person, you're a one-man show. And so many times you either get one thing, someone who's a great salesman, but just can't do the work, right? Or on the other side, someone who's just really good at the work, but just really horrible at the bookkeeping, right? So we we have, you know, multiple apartment complexes and we'll have contractors and sometimes they'll do the work and we'll try to get them to send us an invoice, but they're so busy with the work that it will take, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days before we get an invoice from them. And then out of nowhere, this invoice will come, right? Because they're not able to really consistently do the business side at the same time. And it's hard to have both sides of a brain, right? I was thinking about it is that you have the emotional side, you have the logic side, you have the credibility side, right? And many times, you know, we're each difference or each operating is one part. So you have a guy who's really focused, right? Just on just logically, this is what needs to get done within a job. So I'm going to stay here and be focused on this and I'll get to the paperwork later. But then they have trouble with their finances, right? Because then they can't sustain their business because they, they forget that the construction business has the other side of collections, right? And it's not the bad rap of collection agency. It's just that you have that side of collections, right? Where you have to, of course, run the business and then create revenue to keep the business going forward and growing. And so they get stuck in this part where they can't do both sides, but then they can't grow as well. So they can't put money back in their business. They can't bring other people on or they don't have time, right? That's a very difficult thing is that in most businesses, when you start small, is that to grow, you have to bring someone on, but it has to take you to stop all the chaos that you're doing right now to be able to train that person or put that person in the best position to win. And either you do that and hopefully it's the right person and hopefully they stay with you, or you just throw them in the mix and say, I hope they can figure it out. But usually that falls flat. So as the construction side, it, it really is very valuable 
for you to look at your business as a business, right? And not just you, because we treat it as that I am just the business. And when I'm the business, right? If you take me out of it for any fashion, a business falls apart. So if you're looking at your business today, if you just stop what you're doing tomorrow, right? And, and will the business just collapse in a day, right? If it collapses in a day, then we know, well, either do you want that? Do you just want another job that you're running as yourself? And if it is, no problem, that's okay. But if you want to be able to do more, you want to be able to expand, you want to be able to, you know, break free and have some time for yourself or go, you know, go on vacation or just really just grow your business, then you have to look at it, right? A, another successful business, right? What are they doing? Do they have an admin person? Do they have a scheduler? Do they have someone out there quoting the jobs? Do they have, you know, an old payroll company? Do they have other people here that are doing the work Why I'm going out there managing the work, right? Because when you look at that, you can treat it in a fashion that's not emotional, but logical of, of the next steps for you to go forward with. Yeah. And your story is interesting because they're not sending you an invoice for 120 days. They're not serving themselves because they're not getting paid. So mm -hmm. people don't realize the flip side, like I say in the beginning, you know, somebody, I added that to my monologue, serve yourself first. And that's a great case of that because they don't get your invoice out. They don't get paid. They can't pay employees. And it's that trickle down effect in the business. Um, Go ahead. You know, so what's really powerful for the message here is that, you know, when you're thinking about growth, right, many times you want to go out there and just accomplish more, right? But we're not changing ourselves first. We're not working on ourselves first, right? We can't get the results we want without becoming that person first, like doing the hard work on ourselves, right? Understanding how we're showing up, understanding how we're showing up both mentally, spiritually, physically, right? Are we getting up in the morning and with a positive light? You know, we, we came to this call today and you're like, I'm having a great day, right? Like that's welcome, right? Where most of the world many times, say, hey, how you doing today? Oh, it's horrible. Or the weather, right? All these things that are just, it's just, it, these are things that we can't change, right? If it's raining today, I can't change it, right? So I can't let rain that's 50% of the time affect my moon, just take me down. I have to understand to be able to control myself first, right? It's like when you're on an airplane, they say, you know, put your own ostrich mask on first before you help other people. It's the same thing with you in your life. You have to go and be critical of yourself in a good way to help yourself forward to say, am I showing up as the person that in the future will have that success, right? Or am I showing up that everything's a disaster, everything's fire, like nothing's going to work out. I, I don't deserve anything. You know, everybody else is out to get me. And if you're looking at it that light and you're not having positive results, well, then you can just track it back and say, today, I am showing up as a negative person, but I'm expecting positive results. And that's just not how the world works, right? If you're putting negativity out in the world, it, it's going to attract more negativity, right? And but but that's what sells, right? That's why you see like news, right? Like we don't have all these great stories on the news, right? Because we have all these bad stories, right? Because that's what drives the eyeballs. Because that's what we're drawn to, right? And we're we come from a feast and famine world and a feast of famine backdrop where we're we're so used to this ingrain of just I I have to just go out there and survive each day. But you don't. You could go thrive, but you have to understand just to stop the madness. Put the, in, uh, put the sights back in yourself, control how you show up, control how you go out there and take control of things, and then you can serve others. If you're serving others and you're like, oh, I'm going to go out there and serve, but you're uh, not in a good state, you know, not in your best light, not in a positive mood, right? You're going to have the wrong impact or, or not the desired impact that you, probably you're looking for. Yeah, pivoting is like you were saying with the business, you got to make changes. COVID taught us that. That's what a servant does too for their company. We got to pivot. Oh, it's going to be hard, but... We've got to do what we got to do. You, you proved it before the show. You were talking about you were going down to Florida and you're not going to. Right now, it's October 8th. People listen after the show. There's a hurricane coming and you just weren't safe for your family to go down there, which is a servant's heart to your family, which there's that, lots of that crossover, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you think about how you look forward for, upon yourself, right? is that we all want to do good, right? I heard this funny thing about like acting one time is like, how do you play a real bad, bad guy is that you think you're doing good, right? Even that, even the bad guy in, in, the, in it was acting is like thinking they're doing good, right? Most of the time we think we're doing good, but we have to be really critical and self-aware of how we're showing up because we just might not be showing up as the person we desire to be. And usually that's where the disconnect is, is that it, I had another friend say, say something, you know, we were talking about um, Anthony Chuck's story. He says, you know, many times we get stuck that, you know, we're inside the jar and we can't see the label, right? And the label is all the ways that we're showing up. And it's hard for us to step outside of ourselves and actually look at how we're showing up, right? If you're on a phone call and you're just, you know, yelling at someone, going out there, you're, you know, you're cussing at someone, or you're just doing all these crazy things out there. And you're just like, well, they did me wrong. Or, or, you know, I was having a bad day. Well, ask yourself, like, is that the servant at heart 
that's that's within you is like is that the person that that you desire to be regardless if it's the moments right people remember how you make them feel it's the moments that that really carry on like you can have you know a, a perfect day but then do something awful and then the awful thing is the one thing that's remembered so you have to ask yourself am i controlling what i can control and then am i reacting well to the things i can't control and if you're not then we have to ask the question why and then start to make a uh, really proactive change for to become the better person. Yeah, I love that. I love uh, look inside the jar, not seeing the like, it's But I wrote that down. Audience, you got to go back and listen to that because what a perfect uh, imagery. I'm just thinking myself inside the jar and I can't see what I'm projecting, but I keep doing all the bad. And if that label is a negative label, yeah, you're in trouble. What in your background, your past has gotten you to be such a servant's heart? I think, you know, I look back in time and there was, there was a moment where I just had, I was constantly looking to give, right. And even like growing up in this part. And like, like I said, my dad, like, you know, great dad, my parents just stood together. My dad really worked hard. He struggled, you know, just like he was that country was really working hard and he would just be gone. We were talking like, these are the days before cell phones, you have to find a pay phone. He would be doing these odd jobs on houses where major renovations, where there was no, you know, power to the house. And so we wouldn't see him for days and night. And sometimes I would, he'd be gone before I go to school and he'd be basically back after I went to bed. Right. So there would be, you know, weeks, months, I just, I ran away, like wouldn't see him. He'd be working through weekends, right? And for that, you always want to serve to say, okay, when dad's here, right? But then I got into high school and I had a bunch of loss. I had a couple of friends who died in just horrific accidents and a girlfriend who died in a car accident. And it really set me back. It really set me aside because I just got lost in my way, right? And I got lost in my way of just thinking that the world was against me. And it put me on this, this different path that went to college without much direction, left college with a degree that I wanted nothing to do with. I moved to New York City and started working a lot of odd jobs. And, you know, it just really was putting a lot of the blame, like I talked earlier, on everything around me. You know, my upbringing, my, my schooling, my parents, you know, family, just, you know, all these things that had happened until one day I was leaving work. I was angry at the universe. It was two or three in the morning, got on my bike and got hit by a car, right? And that changed things for me because it made me say, okay, listen, I need to just either take control of things and stop blaming people or just accept what I have, right? And just deal with it, right? But one way or the other, I, I have to stop what was happening right now. And slowly but surely, I started to make changes on myself, which in fact put me in a better position to serve other people. So I went from working behind the bars to, to owning a bar and restaurant, which, and which really empowered me. And then I opened and, and uh, sold a brewery before moving to construction. But what I learned at each pace there was that you have to learn how to empower other people for it. And when you do that and they feel committed to the goal, you all get better results. Because usually as a leader, we think we have to give, right? We have to give the task and tell them to do something and have them do something, but we don't put them in an empowering position where they feel um, welcomed or, or it's warranted for them to, to accept this position and go make massive change. But when you help other people, one, it, it empowers you, but it also empowers them, but you get better results across it. Because now that we have just employees around us, it, we have a responsibility, right? I want them to live a great life, right? So if we're doing great, there's no reason they shouldn't do great too, right? It's not a, a plus minus, right? It's not, oh, I have to, for me to do great, they have to work for free or do less or do others, right? When you look at that and you say, okay, if I can drive forward the business by helping them, right? It goes to all parts. And now that we own a, a large amount of apartment communities, the through line is simply this. We buy an apartment, we make it a better place to live, which makes the tenants happier, which which basically puts position to them that they're welcome to pay more rent to meet the market rent, which creates more revenue for the building, which ultimately creates more cash flow for the property, which creates better return for our investors. So it's a win-win all around just by going out there and looking to do better across the board. That story you just told is interesting to me because I've talked to other people and they buy an apartment complex and all the first thing you talk about is ROI. Okay, I spent two million five years. We'll give you worth five and this and that. And then the fourth or fifth conversation is, oh, and by the way, the tenants need to have this and this and this. You flipped it. The tenants were your number one priority. And then all this stuff, the investors were taken care of down the road. That's a service heart, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, like, so it's a very important thing for the investor. We found that if we drive just with just going in there and maximize, because like, as a, like, I lived in the apartment community first, right? So like, think about it. Someone takes over new ownership. What's your biggest fear? Oh, they're going to jack the rent on me. So if I just come in there today and nothing's changed and I say tomorrow the rent's $400 more, 
you, you feel slight. You feel like, well, what am I doing? I just, I picked this place. But if I go in there and I improve the landscaping, I improve the signage, I improve the minis, I just, I make, I brighten it up, right? New signage. I, I go and take care of work orders and do all these things to serve the property. Well, tenants, they, they say, well, man, I don't want to move. Like, look at all these changes happen. I'd rather stay here. It's expensive to move, right? I don't want to go move down a block, pay these expenses fees to a place that's probably not being operated as well just to pay the same rent that they're going to now charge me. So I'll welcome to pay this more rent. So it serves the investors when we do it this way because it, it yeah. gets the property to a point because in a, in a large commercial property, two things that are very costly, right? It's, it's the turnover, right? The vacancy and the cost to renovate the units, right? Very costly, right? So the more that we can do to, to keep tenants, to be happy tenants, to stay, right? And it increases our, our occupancy or at least our stay time, right? That carries forward to the cash flow of the property. Yeah. Uh, we, we, our dads were both in construction. My dad used to do the same thing. He'd be owned properties and we're not going to raise the rent for seven years. All around the rent's going up because they're paying on time. They're taking care of the property. And he did quite well. We were never, you know, was, was never broke because, and they were happy because that's the most important thing. As you know, a tenant that's not happy could be a lot more problems than trying to make an extra two or 300 a month from each person there. It's better to keep them happy for overall. Now, you have a private fund that you work with, with commercial real estate. What's your, why'd you jump into that? What's your passion for commercial real estate? It really came down to time management is that I was mm. doing all these businesses where, you know, we, we were doing, of course, the, 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 the restaurants, we were now running the, my dad's construction business, which was just a highly um, specialized business. Right. And then we started to do a lot of the residential, you know, flipping wholesaling and it was so it was so me oriented, right? Where I, I had to be, you know, 25 hours a day, if there was, I, I would be used, right? I'd have to do something. But again, because those businesses were so me targeted, I stopped, right? Then the business was uh, was basically hurt, right? So I had to ask myself, like, we're, we're starting a young family. My, my, my wife was pregnant with our first kid. And we just said, like, listen, like, we have to understand a way to, to look about how we can get back our time. And I came upon a podcast where someone was buying apartment buildings and I just understood the magic of it. I understood how to run large companies where you couldn't power forward, you could take yourself out of it, right? Because at the time, you know, we were we were all in everything here in New Jersey at the time. I'm now in Tennessee, where we'd run to, you know, run to meet the contractors, run and go meet the tenant, go and do this part, do that, do that, run left and right. But when we looked at this model that we could go invest a thousand miles from us and put together a team and allow the team to run the day-to-day it stood out and it stood strong. So we basically went all in, put the blinders on to learn the model, understand it, just to go out there and buy large apartment buildings. So we brought a 94 unit that was back in 2017. Um, from there, it just, that was the basically the, the first process of the process to just learn the in and out of it. So that process worked very well. And so we just rinsed and repeat over 30 something transactions now. I love your lesson you just taught. You wanted to be for family for, business is important. We need money and all that, but you put your family first, talk to your wife and said, how do we maximize our time for our family? I mean, maybe you go buy a McDonald's and let somebody, you know, you've decided commercial real estate. And I love that audience. It's a great lesson to learn. He's very successful. His family sees him more. We were just talking about his children going on vacation. They're off this week for school. That's the pot. It can be done. And anybody can do it. You're showing that and you're not homeless and broke. That's, what I want people to get, you can make these pivots and still very successful, but more importantly, you have a family that's super pumped up and fired up and happy. You know, what's great about business now is that we, we have a great team. They're, they're great here. They're great for us, but we can now operate in a time that I can control my day. Right. So, so, you know, I get to do this great podcast after this, I'm going to take my kids to a pumpkin patch. Right. And then, you know, we'll see where the day goes. We might still go somewhere, you know, it's like, but I have the team behind me that I can now, I can go to their schools a half mile away. So I go to see them for lunch or I go to their little activities or I can go do these things or I can leave early to go take them out to sports because we're working, continuing to work just to create the life that allows us to do life, right? Not just do work. Yeah. And it's interesting, both our dads, I bring that back up because it's very apropos here. You said your dad worked, you know, 10, 12, and you didn't see him for weeks. Same way. Mm -hmm. One thing my dad did is he went to my sporting events, but then he went back to work. Went to yeah. my baseball game from three to five and where's dad? Oh, he's back in the office. That doesn't have to happen anymore from what you just said across the board. We with the online and these communication tools, our phones and all that, we could take advantage of great technology. We're coming to the end here. What, when you hear servant leadership, what thoughts come to your mind? 
you know, leadership can get a good and bad rap, right? The, the bad rap is like when you go out there to be just a task giver, right? And you're just, you're giving someone a task giver. And then on that front, you know, we get back to the empowerment part. So they go do the task and like, okay, I just did it, but they don't know why they did it or what the function of it or what the goal or what the result was. And when they get done with that, they have to come back to you for the next task and then the next task and rinse and repeat. And then you're so busy just giving tasks out, right? And so you forget that you're not leading people forward. You're just a task giver, right? And so when you can say, hey, here is the ultimate goal of where we're going to go. Here is how I've done this process before. Here's the task I'd like you to start out on to get to that task. What happens is that they go and now they feel empowered because they know where to go. They know where the end line is, but they also may say, hey, I have this other way that that might work and be more efficient. And 50% of the time I get something that's more efficient, quicker, and I get out of the way and I just, I don't have to allow them to show them what to do. I just say, go, go right there and get it done. And then I can go focus on the key roles that I need to focus on here in the business and get out of the way. Great lesson. I know I keep saying lessons, but he's not recreating the wheel audience. He's got the marketing guys. They do it. They come and they make kind of, hey, we're thinking about this. You look and then they go do their thing because you can't do it all, especially a big company like you have. Absolutely. Yeah. Roles for everybody. That That's so cool. Any empowerment part is so huge. Well, let's finish with a great question. Always like a fun question at the end to get to know like you it. a little better. So you've got a reservation at a restaurant in Tennessee. There's a table of four. You're going to op occupy one of the seats, of course. Dead or alive, who would you invite in the other three seats? Why would you invite them? And what food would you order? Hmm. Great question. So, um, man, first thought is Ben Franklin. Just thought Ben Franklin would be wow. very interesting. Just all, all the rigging roles and just how he played um, – path in uh, society. The second would be Jesus, right? You have to ask Jesus mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the, just the, the virgin birth, right? And then uh, the third, uh, go to the Elon Musk. How can you go wrong with Elon Musk, right? And on right. that front, right, you you can't go wrong with with a meat dish. So I, so I think I think you, you can never go wrong with steak and potatoes, right? So it's, I think steak potatoes pleases the masses, right? So, so steak and potatoes will be the role. And we'll, the we'll put a salad in there just in case someone yeah, wants just to fix it. So yeah. the South has got you, even though New Jersey has steaks. There's some really good steaks places. I've been there. Tennessee's got you a little bit with that Southern uh, barbecue, which is really, really good. That's right. And, and it's interesting. I love Jesus and Elon Musk to have a conversation. Oh, yeah. Could you that would be so intriguing. I, it's just caught my ear. Well, yeah. Jason, I want to thank you so much. You, you, you've you proven that you could be a servant's heart, be successful. And really, anybody can do it but it's the taking action is the most important thing. And you do it every day in your business and your life. And that's awesome. How could people, people listening want to reach out to you, learn more about you, support you. Sure. Yeah. So I appreciate you again, having me on the show. I have um, two podcasts, the live 100 podcast. It's a quick six to eight minutes, just talking about just self-improvement, self-optimization, just going out there and taking action, taking control of your life and multifamily lives, a podcast just focused on what we do in apartment buildings. And if you want to learn more about that, go to jasonyarusi.com. So that's Live 100 and Multifamily Lives. Perfect. He's a busy Multifamily guy, life. see? Yeah, that's, I mean, they do, I do one podcast and it's stuff to do too. I'm glad you got all those people doing those roles. That's it right. Takes a my wife time. helps with the Multifamily Live podcast. So I, so oh. I, don't, do it all my own. I don't do it all on my own. So over there. Amen course, to your nice. wife. That's, that's beautiful. Right. What's her name? Peely. Peely, shout out to Peely. God bless. Keep doing that. Awesome. Um, again, thank you so much, Jason. And thank audience- you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And here's why those people, ah, you're trying to get more subscribers. Yeah, that would be nice. But more importantly, there's something Jason said. You want to go back to this and listen to it. That's why I love podcasts, the education, motivation, inspiration, especially education. He said some things here about empowering and roles and letting people do their thing and the servant's heart. Well, you can incorporate that in your life and make a change in your life, but you need to understand it. So when you subscribe, it's accessible to you. And maybe somebody has a multifamily home they want to sell or family or friends interested. You give them this podcast. They can learn all about Jason in 20 minutes and not everything, but get the feel of Jason and go, hey, I want to connect with Jason. And of course, he sent his contact info here to do that. So go ahead and do the subscribe. And the other thing is comment on the YouTube channel or on the podcast when it comes out later. Critique this podcast. Me and Jason, it's all about you guys, the audience. It's not about us. We're just trying to help you, motivate you, inspire you, like I always say. So critique that. And if it's a comment for Jason, I'll make sure he gets it. Um, or you can send him that message uh, through all those contacts we're going to do. And as always, me and Jason want to thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. Have a great day, everyone.